Larry Shova, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives, joining us now from the CME Group in Chicago. Larry, always great to see you. Now, obviously, we've been talking about this rise in 10-year in Treasury yields there and, and of course, the, the flight of capital out of emerging um, markets as well. I know you've been calling this type of environment a double-edged sword. Just explain for us what you mean. Yeah, well, the double-edged sword, I think, on one hand, uh, yields are going up for the right reason. I mean, we're seeing growth around the world. I mean, at least in the U.S., we're seeing Europe get its way out of recession. Perhaps the China story is a little bit overstated, but the bottom line is rates are going up for the right reasons. That's the one side of the sword. The other side of the sword is that, let's face it, uh, 10 year yields in the U.S. at two spot six is probably all due to tapering. Beyond that is all drama of all the unknowns of who's going to succeed Bernanke. When are they? going to taper, how much are they going to taper, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's the other side, with, and that just creates the volatility that we've seen, and the markets just don't like that. In terms of, um, as well, generally August so far, when you're looking at equities, it's been pretty negative so far. I mean, the S&P 500 managed to snap that four-session losing streak uh, in the session just gone there, but um, overall, it, it's been uh, not a great month so far. No, it hasn't. But, you know, Bridie, I think some of it just might be rotation. I mean, let's face it. Um, you look at Europe, uh, the Euro stocks, Dow 50 is up uh, an 8 percent on the quarter. That compared to the SPX being up like two and a half, three percent. So maybe people are starting to see that there's some value now in Europe that now that it's climbing itself out of recession. The SPX here in the U.S. up 16, 17 percent on the year. I mean, how much farther can it go without a, a new impetus? So people are starting to look at other markets. Markets. It makes a lot of sense. Just looking at the the ten year yields and uh, the level, the next level, the risk events, because this week's pretty big for that, isn't it? We've got the the PMIs due out. We've also got the Fed minutes. We've got uh, Jackson Hole. Um, what's your thinking? Are we going to see um, it hit that three percent number? I, I personally don't think so because too many people think we have to for some odd reason. I mean, I think there's all these vague generalities with the 10-year uh, yield. And let's keep something in mind. Like ever since this tapering talk started in May, we've seen the 10-year yield go up by about 125 basis points. In the same at the same period of time, the the S&P 500 has rallied and at to up to 1625. So it wasn't as damaging to the equity market that everybody's making it out to be. It it's just one of those things that short term it's causing a lot of chaos because the market has not found a home. And at the end of the day, whether it's two and a half percent or three percent, I don't think it's going to bother the next move in the equity market. Also, a lot of housing data due this week. Uh, we had Home Depot uh, through the session there overnight talking about raising its uh, full year earnings and revenue forecast, citing uh, an improved housing market. What's your read on, on what we'll see in yeah. the, the economic reports, Stu? Well, as you as you mentioned, we have three housing reports coming out uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here in the U.S. And I think it's going to show uh, not a narrative change or not that we're we're growing by leaps and bounds, but I don't think we're retracing either. I think this is going to be a slow climb up. I mean, let's keep in mind we've fallen down like a five year flight of steps with our housing market. And so I think we're just climbing our way out of it. It's going to be painfully slow, but the numbers are going to point to the right direction. Just looking at some other markets as well, and we saw oil, well, U.S. crude down 2%. Brent up, though, on worries about Middle East supply. Um, what's your read on uh, the oil markets there and, and what we're seeing and, and how you're sort of trading as a result of that? Yeah, well, short-term traders definitely taking some profits right here. But, boy, I think the long-term trend for oil is, is definitely up. I mean, we're just seeing the supply disruptions that could happen for any minute from Libya with regards to Egypt, et cetera. I mean, I think the uh, supply story is such that you have to own it. And I think what we saw the last couple of days, especially today, was just some profit-taking from some short-term uh, uh, discretionary CTA traders. And on Europe, I mean, we've seen some better than expected data there and uh, certainly rallying in stocks last week at any rate. What's, what's your thinking on Europe there? Does it present value compared to, to the U.S.? 
Yeah, that's a great question because I think, at least here in the United States, there's so much cheerleading going on about Europe, but I really don't think many people are exposed to Europe right now. And I think this still has a lot of room to go higher. And I think, uh, in particular for me, I like the insurance company, I like the uh, uh, the banks, the banking sector. I mean, it's pretty risky sticking your neck out, but I do think they're at the beginning stages of reset of a uh, ending of a recession, getting out of it. So they're the two sectors I really like, and especially because I. Think I think uh, the U.S. market's just not exposed to Europe right now. And just finally, very quickly, Larry, I mean, you, you sort of talked about this sort of negative sentiment out there. Um, what else are you doing in terms of investing then to, to make most of that? Or are you sitting uh, on the sidelines for now? Uh, I'm a little bit on the sidelines, that's for sure, because I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm still long the U.S. dollar at the, against the majors, and that really has not worked out that well. I mean, let's be honest about it. But I think long term, I, I still am very, very bullish on the dollar. And I do think when it comes to the commodity currencies, I think they're just getting lambasted right now. And I think it's a good time to start looking at value, especially Australian dollar, not so much Canada, but the Aussie I really do happen to like. All right, Larry, great to get your insights as always. Thank you.